Hello and welcome to a new episode of Science Stuff. Today I invited my fellow friends David and Nate to explain you something about calculators. So please welcome David and Nate. Science Stuff. Uh, we have three types of calculators here. Each of them uh, follow a few different rules and I think all of them are programmable, so let's explain the differences between them. Okay, so here you have the first calculator from Casio. The feature of this calculator is the fact that you don't have to use brackets, but this can sometimes get you into trouble. Let's say you're solving a long example using, uh, as you can see, you're using the sine rule to calculate the angle of sine b, but sometimes when you would have a longer example, like the board long, you could make a mistake and it would all go wrong just because you're not using brackets. The second calculator, the Textures Instruments, has the feature that you can put your sign in right away. As you can see, you don't even have to put the multiplication sign in between it and it still works. Which is a disadvantage mentioned in the third calculator. The feature of the third calculator is the fact that what works in Textures Instruments doesn't work here. You always have to have the multiplication sign and the bracket, but it is of course programmable, so it's up to you how you want it. As we all know, mathematics follows the PEMDAS rule, or bitmass if you're British, uh, which basically means parentheses, ex exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, or if you're British, brackets, indices, etc, etc. It's the same from then on. Calculators follow this rule as well, though uh, they don't apply the exact same logic that a normal human would when they look at a mathematical problem. Things like division and uh, the use of brackets kind of change the way a calculator looks at an equation. Uh, so it's important to keep that in mind when you're typing stuff into the calculator. Brackets are very good tools, uh, and I think that they're highly underused in most middle school and high school applications, and I think that um, use, using too many of them is better than getting uh, a wrong answer on an exam because you don't know how to put in brackets. So, let's get into it. Well, here we have an example of the sine rule where you have a lot of functions happening at once and obviously to a normal human being I see something like this where I have sine x equals 12 sine 40 over 8. You know, logically I just do 12 sine 40 over 8. But unfortunately a calculator can't really think like that. Uh, they're not as smart as humans, even though they might seem like they are. So here, to punch this into the calculator, what I have to do is I have to first put in brackets 12 sine, and then this calculator specifically puts another bracket, so I'll put in the 40. And then I have to close that bracket, and then I can divide it by 8. Right? So that gives me my answer. Here I can illustrate the calculation visible on the board. Assuming you're calculating this example, you want to multiply the sine function of 40 times 12 twice. So, if you put it into the calculator without a bracket behind 40, it's going to multiply the 40 inside the sine times 12. And the whole result will come out as 10.8, which is incorrect. What you have to do is use the bracket because if you didn't, it would just increase the number inside the sign and get you the wrong result. So, I can now explain you the features of the calculators. Uh, the calculator, as you can see, has a bunch of buttons. Most of them you'll maybe never use, but the button that you will very highly probably use in high school is the shift mode setup, where you can change in between various things such as degrees and radians. Uh, most of us to this day only know degrees and radians, but we could use another video to explain each one of these specially so that our audiences can understand them and know when to use them. In conclusion, calculators are some great objects because there's a lot of mathematical things that a person cannot do in their head. It's physically impossible. Uh, so calculators allow us to do this. Obviously there's a few kinks in the way that calculators work and there sometimes you have to kind of push it in the right direction and say, I want this but I have to put this in first so that it knows exactly what I'm looking for. So that is, in essence, uh, the basics of a calculator. Thank you.
in a short time we will release another video for the Gala Times YouTube channel. So if you are interested in watching that, consider subscribing down below so you are notified whenever a new video comes up. Thank you for watching and see you next time. David and Nate who study mathematics to explain you something about calculators. Why is my phone ringing again? <laughs> And this gets you to get a...